a massive change is coming to our weather. Oh my. That will completely flip our weather pattern on its head. It'll pack the hurricane season, the severe weather, and our temperatures in a massive way. What is this change and how long will it last? I'll have all that and more in today's Saturday forecast that starts right now. Hey, what's up guys? Me and Arnold is StormCat5. Happy Saturday here. We've got a lot to talk about in today's forecast. Let's first start with the visible satellite. How is our United States brethren looking right now? The majority of the country is beautiful. Our Western brethren, absolutely gorgeous. Our Midwest brethren, gorgeous. We've got an upper level low that's spinning here in the Great Lakes. And notice it's dragging a cold front behind it as well, bringing down some big time cold there. We also have a leftover boundary down here in the southeast where we have big time showers and storms mainly over the Gulf and over Florida. Okay, so what's this big change I keep teasing about in the forecast? It's this right here, this upper level trough right here that is bowling its way into the lower 48. Notice as we go throughout the weekend, it moves down and this big dip in the jet stream. Look at all those upper level winds. That's going to bring down a lot of Canadian cold air, guys. We're going to have a couple of cold fronts that move through one today and then potentially one early next week. That's going to significantly drop our temperatures. Notice behind it, we've got another trough that moves through middle week and then another one potentially that moves through late next week. So the eastern United States will be in a trough with winds coming out of the northwest here for the majority of the week. Meanwhile, we've got a weak ridge of high pressure out west that should keep things relatively warm, but our east coast brethren will be in the trough here and that will bring significantly cooler air into the United States. No. And that's exactly what the Climate Prediction Center has been highlighting. We have a huge swath of the U.S. for the last week of August where we are going to see a significant cool down from Wisconsin and Minnesota all the way down into the southeast here. That includes Ohio. That includes Tennessee. That includes so many states. And even into the Carolinas where we just had Aaron move through. Now speaking of Aaron and the tropics, check it out. This is what Aaron looks like right now. Completely destroyed. That's Aaron. Hard to believe, isn't it? That's Aaron in the top right corner of the screen. Aaron has been completely sheared apart by that cold front and is no more. I feel like we need to have like a funeral. But there is two other systems that we are watching in the tropics right now, we got Invest 90 right here, which is on the verge of becoming a tropical depression. That is likely going to be named later on today. We've also got Invest 99L down here as well. This one has less of a chance of forming, but more of a chance of impact to the United States if it does form. And this is Invest 90L. If we take a look back at the satellite right there, it is looking pretty healthy this morning. There's some big time convection and all that convection is moving right at Bermuda. And this is 99L down here as well. Not looking as impressive. It's still got some storms at the center. It's moving at the Lesser Antilles, but there's not much spin and it's dealing with a lot of dry air. The big question is, are either one of these systems going to be a threat to the United States? And the answer, eh, probably not. 90L is Definitely not. The path of that is going to take it well away. It's going to follow right in the footsteps of Aaron. 99L is what we have to talk about now. Let's dive into it in more detail. This is what 99L, the southern one, looks like. If we zoom in a little bit further, notice you don't really see much spin here. You do see some showers and storms, and some of them are spiraling around this way. There's just not a lot to look at here in terms of tropical systems. This is just more like a cluster of storms at this point. Now, what do the models say intensity-wise for 99L and the majority of them don't even have this thing becoming a tropical storm. Some do flirt with this thing becoming a hurricane here, but that is about 144 hours from now. So we're talking about several days in advance, and that's about right here in the model guidance. And we do need to watch this storm because yes, the conditions are going to be very harsh for 99L and the majority of the models had this thing getting absolutely shredded by the wind shear and by the dry air. But once our storm gets into the Caribbean about right here, there will be a small window for intensification. So if this storm does survive for the next couple of days, 
there could be a sneaky threat for potential development. Right now, the odds are looking low. It's good news. And if we take a look at the wind shear over top of the Atlantic, you'll notice here's where 90L is gonna be traversing right through there. We've got a couple of pockets of strong wind shear right here, right here, and right here on the backside that should help to continue to tear this system apart. And this is about when 99L is gonna be here in the Caribbean, you can see still there is some wind shear, although on the southern side, there's a little bit of a gap here. So that's that little bit of a window, that teeny window for development that she might have right now. Yeah, we don't even really need to think about it. Go on with your lives. Enjoy it. Live life. We talked about Invest 90, which is going to be soon Ferdinand. And that's just going to bring some showers and storms to Bermuda. And then we talked about Invest 90 down here as well, which also shouldn't be a problem. Now, what is going to happen behind these two systems? And will the last week of August be active in the tropics? <clears throat> nope, it will not. Let's take a look at why. If we go into the last week of August, notice all this red coming over top of the Atlantic. That is higher pressure, and higher pressure tends to promote sinking motion. When you get sinking motion, you don't get storms. When you don't get storms, you don't get hurricanes. So that is why the last week of August is going to be very quiet. And this is actually an interesting phenomenon, guys, that we call the Madden Julian Oscillation. Some jackhole named himself after a weather pattern. The cojones on that guy just would never work. The storm cat oscillation. Stupid. But that's exactly what we have going on here. We've got sinking motion here in the Atlantic. And then further off to the west in the Pacific, you'll actually have rising motion. MJO or the Madden Julian Oscillation has this where there'll be a pocket of rising air. This will be where hurricanes are tend to favor to form because you'll have more storms that form. You'll have more of those rotating and then all of those storms will combine into a system. But then there's a second phase of the MJO where you have sinking motion and that's what we're about to get into here where we'll have relatively higher pressure at the surface. Air will sink. It will suppress thunderstorms and it'll be sunny and dry and that'll make it really hard for any tropical systems to form. And that's exactly what we have here, guys. This big time high pressure, big time sinking motion, last week of August, quiet. But what about our severe weather? Are we gonna have any severe weather the next couple of days? The answer, eh, probably not either. Because as these cold fronts sweep through, they'll sweep out all of the moisture, all the instability here, and that will allow our Eastern brethren to get relatively shh, quiet. Did I just misspelled quiet? Dang it. So Saturday, not much severe weather to talk about at all. The only risk that we have is this gourd-shaped risk down in Colorado and Cheyenne. That is a one out of five risk, 0% tornado, 5% wind, 5% hail. Not a big deal at all. Check it out. Sunday, more of the same. Once again, only this small area out here with a one out of five risk. The rest of the United States is going to be downright gorgeous. Look at this huge swath in the Midwest where we're expecting no rain, no storms, just cool, beautiful weather. We could technically get a storm or two, especially in the Southeast here, but that cold front will be sweeping and will help to push out any moisture and any problems. Take a look at Monday. Wow, more of the same. Once that cold front gets offshore, it's gonna take with it all the bad weather. And the majority of the Eastern half of the country is going to be downright beautiful, even in Texas, Oklahoma, from Minnesota, down through Wisconsin, down through Ohio. A beautiful beginning of your week next week is on tap. Just makes it boring to talk about the weather though. In terms of rain over the next 24 hours, you could get some showers up here near this low where you will see some increased clouds, especially as that low continues to move off to the east as well. So that's today. Maybe some storms out here. This is the severe weather that we're expecting near Cheyenne and Colorado. That's going to start off the Rockies and eventually some storms will develop further off to the east. Our southeast brother and once again are dealing with the leftovers of that boundary. So we are going to expect some stormy weather in Florida mainly. Wow, look at that. Big time storms on Monday night and Sunday morning. Very moist, very wet down here. Could get some flooding for our Florida 
brethren, but a lot of these rain showers that are over here are going to stay off the coast, which is nice for our Carolina brethren. And then here's that cold front that's sweeping through the United States that will affect us on Sunday afternoon and evening. Saturday, we could get a couple of showers here in the Great Lakes region, and that cold front is going to slide into the northeast on Sunday, and that's when we'll get another chance for a couple of showers and storms. But by the time we get to Monday morning, absolutely gorgeous here in the Northeast as that front slides off the coast. All right, so how cool is it gonna get? Let's take a look. Well, the weekend will still be in the 80s for much of our country, especially down in the South, down in Oklahoma. Even in portions of the Northeast, we've got 80s all the way up in places like Montreal, Boston, and New York City as well. But watch what happens Saturday going into Sunday. There's that cold front sweeping through right in there. See it right there. There it is. That's the cold front that'll be moving through on Sunday, on Monday. Watch as we go into the week. Our temperatures, we're talking about only the lower 70s and upper 60s from Oklahoma City all the way up through Maine. Are you kidding me? And look as we go, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Look at that. We're going to have highs in the 50s here. Oh, no. I hate that. Going into Wednesday, going into Thursday, those cooler conditions hang around. We do have a little bit of a rebound on Friday where we do have some heat returning to places like the Texas and the Southeast. That's why I'm going to Florida. What is happening on the map? What is going on? The man's freaking out. Ah, my computer's going to blow. All right, we got to shut my computer down before it blows. Thank you for joining me on this Saturday. I hope all of you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. If you do like what you see here, you do like this channel, make sure you smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. I want to see you in the comments below. That's all I got. This is Meteorologist Stormcat5, and I'll see you on the next one.